Here I'm going to explain a type of proof. It's called proof by induction. It is one of the five main proof types in a discrete math course or some sort of computer science course or even maybe a philosophy course that uses proofs. The basic idea behind proof by induction is that if you have a dom domain and a problem that spans an infinite amount of numbers, generally it's numbers, maybe it's all positive integers, which is what we're going to use in the examples, you can prove if you look at this ladder, I have these steps, one, two, three, okay, and then just, um, you know, it's numbers in between, and then I have k and k plus one. The basic idea is that if you can prove that you can get on the first step, then you have then proved that you can get on the, or if, if you can, sorry, if you can prove that you can get on the first step, right, and then you assume that you can get on k steps, which is anywhere like from here, k would be this. It'd, be, it'd be basically be anything in between the base case, which is 1, and k. Okay, k is all this. And you can't prove it initially. You have to assume it, okay? But if you can prove that the, this one works, 1, the base case, and you can assume that k works, and then based on your assumption of k, you can show that k plus 1 works, then you can safely say, and you have proven, that if I can go to 1, then I can go to 2, then I can go to 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, or k, k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus 3, and k is just any number in between 1 and k. So you're basically just proving that if you can start here, and then at the same time k, you can start anywhere, and then from k, you can go to the next one, k plus 1, then you can begin and go infinitely as far as the, the domain is. So... For this, there's a little bit of formatting involved. You have to kind of write it as a propositional function or a logical function, sorry. So whatever problem you have will be revolving around this function P of M, okay? Now you have what's called the base case, which is the very first, it, it's the, the beginning of the domain of whatever you have. So if you have all positive integers, in some classes, you'll start at zero, and some you'll start at one. In my case, what I've done, I, I start at zero. So my, my very first case for all positive integers would be P of zero. Now, if P of zero works, then it's proven true, you know, it works. For the inductive hypothesis, this is where K comes into play. Now, when you write K, you can't, uh, you can't say that K works. You can't say it's true. You have to assume it's true, okay? You have to assume that P of K works. And based on your assumption, you can then prove K plus one. To prove K plus one, you have to mathematically implement K in your K plus one and show it's kind of hard to explain, but you have to show that the math works. So after you've, after you've proven your base case, you've assumed P of K, you then prove P of K would theoretically work if P of K, or sorry, if you would prove that P of K plus one works if P of K works. So your conclusion in a logical way would be P of your base case and p of your hypothesis imply p of k plus 1. It's kind of hard to see that without an example. So I'll go ahead and provide just a couple. But this is the basic notation for all of it. And this is the, the basic idea. For this first problem, we have the summation i equals one i and so basically it's very similar to a factorial except the instead of, instead of multiplying each number you know it's a summation so you would add each one and this is the closed form for this summation so you have to prove that this closed form in this question question works with this summation okay and i didn't put a domain on this one the domain would be m is any, I'll just erase the image, 
any positive integer. So to start this, we have to first say p of n. Okay, p of n, this function is the summation n i equals 1, i equals n, n plus 1 squared. Okay, or sorry, not squared, over 2. So you have it written down in the correct notation. Now, the first step is the base case. So the base case, if we're starting at all positive, or sorry, the base case here would be at 1. Earlier I said that generally all positive integers starts at 0 for my case, but you know the base case is already laid out as 1 here. So we would put down p of 1. And if we write that down in the summation, n becomes 1. i is a different variable, still stays i. But then for all the ends over here, put them over, ah, what am I doing? One, two. And if we go ahead and solve that, we see that this equals one, which in the summation, if I put one here, I mean one is just one. So for the P of K then, at this point, our hypothesis we are saying that I can write k of i, i equals 1, equals k, k plus 1 over 2. Okay. This isn't immediately important right now. We are just assuming that this works. And what we'll end up doing when we do our inductive step to prove it is we will actually use our inductive hypothesis in our inductive step. So our inductive step will look like this. The thing about it though, if I'm inserting k plus one for all of them, k plus two over two. This is where start, things start to get tricky. Basically, this part right here is our goal, okay? Just this individual part, okay? This is what we we're trying to get to. Oh, whoa, that all went away. But yeah, this part, this is our goal. If we can take this, oh, you know what, let me do a different color. If we can take this part in this specific problem and use the inductive hypothesis to create this, then we have proven that it is true. So let me go ahead and do some work to show that. Here we have it again. And if we remember the hypothesis we have, we can go ahead and write that again. Okay, so we are going to need this. Whoa. Okay. For this specific problem, we do have to do something a little unique to a lot of other problems. Uh, we have to break down this summation into its actual, to what it actually is in numbers. You don't have to do this, but it makes it a lot easier to see how it works. We basically have to break it down into the latter problem. So this, okay, is breaking down into one plus two plus yada, 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 plus k, okay? We see that. However, we are trying to prove k plus one, okay? So what would be the next logical step to come after that? You have to add k plus one, and you have to prove that this equals this, our inductive step, okay? Sorry if my handwriting is horrible, I'm still getting used to this pad. So what we'll do to show that is we'll actually take this part and we will plug in this right here. Well, actually, sorry, we'll plug in this part of it. This isn't gonna do us a whole lot. So if I replace that part with 
this part, and then I continue to have plus k plus 1, that gives me a little bit closer to trying to prove that this equals this. Okay, I want them to equal each other. How I'm going to do this is I am going to put these together. Let me get a good color. I'm going to have to find a common denominator for these so that I can put these all under the same fraction. So I'm going to have k, k plus 1 over 2. Now I have to make this divisible by 2. So I'm going to have plus 2 k plus 1. Okay. Now we can see here, I'm going to make these the same color so that because uh, we're combining them. This now equals, if we distribute both of these inside, we have k squared plus, actually I'm not going to make them the same color just yet, just so we can still see, plus 2k plus 2. Make this all over 2. Now I'm going to go make them the same. So if we add these all together, we'll then get k squared plus 3k plus 2. And here's the craziest part. We can see that this polynomial is actually uh, mess up. It's actually k plus 1 and k plus 2 over 2, which means that we have effectively taken our inductive hypothesis, right? And we have shown that k plus 1 is true by taking our inductive hypothesis and the next inductive step. And we have made it equal to what we said our goal inductive step would be. So we have effectively proven that, yes, this is true. And then our conclusion, you know, was p of 1 and p of k implies p of k plus 1, which we've shown by taking the, in, the basis step or the base step and our inductive hypothesis. And we have used those to imply that this works. For the next example, for the next example, we have a problem that's going to end up being a little bit different. It's going to have a little bit less work actually involved with it. And I kind of like it because it, it shows a very interesting property of this type of formula right here. Here we're basically saying that yes, if you have n, and n is any positive integer, if you take that positive integer, cube it, and then subtract it by itself, it'll always be divisible by 3. How are we going to show that? First, we have to take it and do the proper notation. Make it a function p of n. Okay, make that divisible. Oh, got that divisible. n cubed minus n. All right. With our basis step here, well, since we have all positive integers, and uh, unlike the last one, our the summation doesn't set our lower bound at one. We can go and set it equal to zero. So for this part, one out of three divides zero cubed minus zero, which then says that three divides zero, which it does. It would just be zero. For the inductive hypothesis, basically just going to replace all of the ends with zero, or with k's, very sorry. And then, of course, our inductive step. which is our goal. Very sorry. Now this one's gonna end up looking a little bit different. You will see we don't necessarily have a goal as much as we're trying to show that this is divisible by three. This is more straight up if what we can turn this inductive step 
if we can show that that's divisible by three, then that's, I mean, that's enough. We don't have to do anything else. We don't really have to use our inductive hypothesis. This is enough using our inductive hypothesis plus one to, actually, it's very sorry. No, you'll, you'll see eventually that we will end up using our inductive hypothesis. Very sorry, but no. But it's more straight up than the last one. If it's divisible by three, then it works. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. So we can go ahead and we can go ahead and show that here. That if I have well, let's see inductive hypothesis again with uh, We can go ahead and show here with our inductive step. Minus k plus one. We're gonna go ahead and use some algebra and arithmetic to simplify this uh, how we need it. So we're gonna go ahead and factor all of this out. So we'll have three. So we'll say this will be k cubed plus 3k squared plus 3k plus 1 minus, and then this is this part over here. So I'm going to go ahead and this part minus k. We're going to go ahead and just distribute that minus sign just to make it a little bit easier on us. So now we can move on to kind of grouping them together. So we can see here that we want to get to this inductive hypothesis because we've already claimed that our inductive hypothesis is divisible by three. So we want to have that. So if we can see this k right here, this k cubed and this minus k, we're going to go ahead and group those together because we've already said that they are indeed divisible by three. So we are using our inductive hypothesis here. Uh, and now we're going to take whatever we have left and bring them over here plus three. Okay. Oh, also, so you see this, you know, you have your minus one and plus one. Go ahead and cancel those out. We don't need them. Now, as you can see, we have this, which we've already said is divisible by three. But now we have these. We haven't really done anything with them, but as you can see, they both have coefficients of three. So as you can imagine, we can come over here and keep what we had before, pull out that three and have k squared plus k. Here, we've effectively proved that this is true because if you see, based on our inductive hypothesis, we said we know that this is divisible by three because we've assumed it here because we have three right whatever this is is going to be multiplied by this three so therefore it will be divisible by three already so because of that we have proven that this is right and that's the basics behind proof by induction uh, strong induction is a little bit more different but it's still the same basic idea you just do a few more base cases and a few more inductive steps but at the end of the day it's still the same but this is mathematical induction but anyway thank you